Grocery store? What do they say? They don't say grocery store. Yeah, they do. Welcome back, bakers. Welcome to the Fancy Cakery. Welcome to my kitchen. On my channel, I make seasonally relevant recipes that you can create, recreate, or use for inspiration in your kitchen. If that's something you're interested in, please click the subscribe button. And let's get into the video. Today we are making banana bread pudding. This is what I learned to make in the Bahamas when you want a dessert but you just have stale bread and any bread will do. It doesn't matter if you had homemade bread or just regular white bread or hot dog buns, hamburger buns, whatever was left over and you wanted to make a dessert and it's simple and it's very easy. And we are not going to focus on measurements today because to be honest, I don't even know if I can tell you in detail all the measurements because every time you make it, it's different. You always have a different amount of bread. You always have a different amount of milk you add. It's just something you put together. It's forgiving. You can put more or less and next time you do more or less and it still will come up just fine. And to make this extra special, we are going to top this with a butter rum sauce. So, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I took half water and half evaporated milk to make milk, and I just got some bread and I just put it in pieces. You don't have to be fine, you don't have to grate it, you don't have to put it in a food processor because it's gonna mush. We're making mush, really. And so I'm just going to cover this and we may use all, we might have to make some more. Looks like I might have to make more, but let's cover it first. So that's all that. We're gonna let that soak, okay? The bread basically has your flour, your leavening agent, I mean, we're not putting any leavening agent in this. The bread has sugar, salt. I really don't know. The bread just has it's bread, okay? It's a flour, so you don't need no flour. All right, so we're gonna put that aside while that sits there and mushes together. So now that our bread is soaking in our milk, we're going to take two eggs. And I have made this many times without eggs. So, some people swear by the eggs, some people don't add the eggs. I'm gonna do two eggs today. Some people use three eggs. You can do whatever you want. And we're just gonna mix our eggs until it's nice and whipped. Now let's look back at our bread. Actually, that might have been, that might have been enough milk. Maybe we'll use a little more. So this is, this is the weird part. I'm gonna take my potato masher and I'm mashing my bread. It's, it looks ooky, but it's gonna be good. And we have two ripe bananas. They are very ripe. And you really can't do this without ripe bananas. So if you have those bananas that's been sitting on the counter and they are overripe and you're like, oh, I don't want to eat them, this is your go-to recipe. I know it looks gross. It is not gross. It's really, really, really good. So we're going to take these bananas. We're just going to put these in here. You don't have to cut them up. Make them pretty because you know what? We're going to... You don't have to cut them up or make them pretty because they're gonna mush too. Some people don't mush their banana bread pudding. They just, it, it goes in with, um, you know, little chunks of bread and that's fine. That's perfectly okay. It is your banana bread pudding. You do what you want to do. And the banana is gonna make it sweet 
but we want it sweet it is a dessert so I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar and like I said I don't know how much I'm gonna put it mix it and then we're gonna taste it and if we need more we'll add more Because we're also putting a sauce on top and that's going to make it sweet. I have my homemade pumpkin pie spice and I'm just going to put about that much. Like I said, we are not measuring. Don't get focused on measuring. Just focus on putting the taste together and putting the ingredients together. Now I'm going to add some melted butter. We're going to add some raisins. I'm not going to put too much because my daughter already told me she don't like raisins. So I'm just going to put a little bit because I like raisins. She could pick them up. Now I'm going to add this to my big bowl because I really want to get a good mix. Okay, so now I'm going to taste it just to see if it tastes how I like it. I think that's right. So I have my butter dish and I'm just going to pour this into my butter dish. Now we're going to bake this at 350 and then we'll be back. We are going to go ahead and start melting our butter. We're gonna go ahead and add some brown sugar. I'm gonna cut it down because we don't want it to burn. And then we're going to add some rum. And I want it really rummy, so I'm going to add two shots of rum. And it's on low right now. And then I'm just going to leave it to reduce until it gets as thick as I want it. Keeping it on low. So this has been baking about 45 minutes to an hour and it's still a little warm. And I could eat this cold, I could eat this hot, but I'm gonna eat it warm. With my sauce. And I'm gonna pour some of my rum sauce on it. Oh, it's nice and hot and if your rum sauce separates just reheat it and it should come back together mm. this is really really rummy and sweet and nice and you just used your leftover stale bread and your bananas that someone was gonna have to throw away. So don't do that. Make banana bread pudding. Someone will think you really, really went out of your way. I am so sure that you and your family at home have a banana bread pudding recipe. Please show me pictures, tell me the recipe. I wanna know what you do different. Maybe I'll try it next time. Comment below and please don't forget to subscribe. 
and join me next time on the Fancy Cakery and let's keep baking together. So a few weeks ago I did a video in which my mother saw snow for the first time and I said it snowed in Texas and I said you know like it's gonna flurry and then go away and yeah Texas didn't joke around this time it snowed in Texas it really really snowed in Texas so I'm driving to the Kroger it's not far very scary. My normal landmarks are gone, such as the sidewalk and the grass. So let me see if I can get out of here with sense. And needless to say, this is not my strong point. I'm just proud of myself for getting in the car at this point. house, my frozen house. This week I have a very special person to shout out. And my shout out person is not one person, but a set of people that went to work, slid on the roads, was brave enough to even get on the road and even think about sliding to work. All the essential workers, all of the firemen, the paramedics, Dallas Fire, all of the nurses, all of the Metroplex, and in the other little towns of Texas that went to work, left their children, their families with no electricity, no heat. Just a few days ago, we were home, me and my children, and the only warmth we had when it went down to one degree was thank goodness I have a wood burning fireplace and thank goodness my husband secured wood at the last minute for us. Um, never been out of electricity in Texas for more than one hour ever. So to be two days without electricity, heat, um, this, my stove is electric. So my son went out to check on his apartment, check on his cat and on the way back they stopped to townies boulevard to the dominoes and picked up pizza and that was the only food we had that was kind of warm that night and that is also an essential worker because that person i don't even know why they went to work that night it was treacherous and freezing cold i saw somebody's post on facebook where they was giving thanks to the whataburger person they stopped at Whataburger on their way to work to get Whataburger and the Whataburger person in the snow, in the cold, probably left home with no electricity and went to Whataburger to work. That is an essential worker. So there are so many more essential workers that went to work and kept us going. All of the crew that was out there in the one degree weather trying to restore our electricity. I am truly, truly thankful and I, I don't know if I could have done it and you are essential. And to all of the grocery store workers that went to work during this time, you are essential. And thank you to all of my friends that reached out and offered a place to stay, that who had electricity, thank you, thank you. You are appreciated.
believe it or not, there's flowers under this. They survive. It's a traffic jam behind me because I guess I'm going too slow. Oh well. Hopefully I'll be brave enough to make it out of my neighborhood. Because I could see me just stopping right now. This is not my thing. I'm petrified. Always am.